Hi, how y'all doing? My name is Gon Sobe. I am with the Better Family Life um, in the art, from the art department. Uh, today we're going to be covering a scene of Thanksgiving, uh, something that we're all familiar with and something that uh, that is coming up here real soon. Um, so I'm going to try to give you guys a, a bit of information of, of, of where it came from and exactly, not necessarily exactly what it means because there's so many different variations in what we learned. But actually, Thanksgiving is a time to celebrate food and to celebrate family, to celebrate togetherness. I mean, it's, it's, it's a time to celebrate now, okay? So I'm going to try to focus or try to let you guys know um, that this day uh, applies more to togetherness, uh, generosity, gratitude, love, understanding. Okay, that's the whole the whole thing about what this 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 little period of time is. Okay, and to what to to make this even more interesting about the different foods that we eat during this time. Obviously, there's different people eat it in different times and. Uh, different types of food, but when it originally was done, Thanksgiving was celebrated with indigenous food from, from food from the American Indians. Okay, turkey, corn, beans, pumpkin, maple, wild rice, all those things. Um, some of the some of the things that uh, uh, the potatoes, um, yes, and, and so on and so forth. All those different things that that that, that we harvest once we farm. Okay, now Thanksgiving, as we were taught and as we constantly are, are reminded in different cartoons and, and, and how they taught us in history, was about um, how the Mayflower brought settlers from England and they all arrived in Plymouth, Massachusetts back in 1621 long, long time ago, almost the same time when I was born. And at that time, um, they held a, a, a feast, a three-day feast, once there was the harvest time. And they celebrated, there's the, this one version where they celebrate it with the indigenous people of, uh, of, um, of the U.S., and in, in particular, a tribe called Wampango, a tribe, uh, an Indian tribe at that time, um, and uh, they shared the food. They were, but this this indigenous tribe was not really invited to to the feast. What happened was, as the settlers, as these guys from England, the the colonizers had come to the Americas, they were celebrating their harvest. So they started shooting their guns and making all sorts of noise, and the indigenous people got scared. They thought they were going to be in, in, in a fight, in a war. And so they came over to, to see what was happening with these colonizers. And, and it's, as history will say, they were there for three days celebrating the harvest. That's one version. Another version is that uh, these colonizers that came in from England were, were almost starving, were almost dying, and the indigenous people came and gave them food so that they could survive. That's one other interpretation. Like I said, there's so many different interpretations, but actually we probably really don't know the truth on what happened. However, this feast, the celebration, was known as a rejoicing, okay? Uh, there might have been some turkey there. There might have been some type of uh, poultry being served at that time, but there was no pies. There was no mashed potatoes at that time like we have today. That's something that we have added to this to to this to the festivities. Okay, um, they probably had some seafood since they were closer to the sea, and um, and there was a, a dish, nasaump, is a dish from the Wampango. Uh, that's the tribe that they were with. It's a porridge made of cornmeal, which later on the settlers adopted. In reality, it was a gathering of people sharing a meal, and it wasn't until 1863 that Link, Lincoln actually um, named it a Thanksgiving. Okay, 
Lincoln declared the last Thursday in November as a day of Thanksgiving and holiday as we know for today, as we know today. But for Native Americans, Thanksgiving has another meaning and is also celebrated for, with food, but through different circumstances. And like I said, there's a lot of different stories about that. But bottom line is that this is a holiday. We are an indigenous land. We should be thankful for them teaching us how to go about uh, taking care of ourselves in terms of eating and what we're supposed to be eating. We're, and we're, we got to remember that we have a very deep connection, connection to the American indigenous people, the Native Americans, of what they did for us. And we need to support those guys also, um, or, or all of us. We need to support all our own different cultures as we go through. All right? All right, that's enough of history. But that gives you an idea of where I'm heading. So what we're going to be drawing today um, is going to, going to be a scene. Uh, and it's, good. It's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a scene of harvesting, okay? It's a scene of how I'm going to utilize uh, two different cultures so that we can come up with a, um, a, a, a semi-balanced idea of what Thanksgiving is. All right, let me grab my pencil and let's start. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do is it's called a cornucopia okay it's it's I, it's 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 um it's a funny uh it's a funny word but actually it's a horn-shaped basket filled with fruits vegetables nuts and flowers all right and it and it's going to be right here we're, we're going to start doing the drawing right here with this cornucopia it almost the cornucopia almost looks like uh a worm in its back and it, it opens up. Here we go. So I'm going to just sort of come in here, start with the, the tail of the worm, go around like in little circles as we go through, and we're going to go back and make like little things here to for this area to start growing like a little worm. Um, I'm not sure if you can see this very clearly. Let me get this a little closer so that you guys can get a better view of what I'm doing. But it's, it goes in like this. Oh shoot. Goes in like this. All of them like semicircles. All right. They're all in semicircle forms. One on top of the other goes like this, and then as, as we're turning towards the front, you won't be able to see any more of this. Okay, so that's the back end of a, the cornucopia of how it's coming. You saw it; it's it's really not that difficult to draw. You're going through in a semicircle fashion, all right, as such, all right. And then the front, the front of the cornucopia is where all the, 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 the food is going to be coming out of, is going to be, like, we're, we're going to start out with just with a circle right here in the front. All right. The circle is coming out pretty decent. All right, like a circle like that. And then around the circle, uh, we're going to have like a little, um, you know, a lot of little embroidery type of design here. But you'll see how this is going to end up. I just want to show you what an empty cornucopia looks like and how to go about drawing the first thing first in the cornucopia, okay? All right. Cornucopia, that's what this is called. Where we're going to be putting all the different foods. And it's a very, very popular popular symbol for Thanksgiving all right so that's what the cornucopia looks like it actually it is like the um, the horn of a goat okay the horn of a goat so you see this would be the top of the head of the goat and this would be his horn 
So that's what it actually comes from. Um, so Thanksgiving began as a bountiful harvest, all right? Bountiful harvest of all the different types of fruits that we have. And here is, here we're gonna switch this around real quick and we're gonna put the different fruits that we're gonna be putting on this, on this drawing, all right? We're gonna change this around here. It won't take less than a few seconds. But I think because the light process, it'd be better if we do this. This is where we're gonna be drawing all the different fruits, okay? All the different fruits and vegetables that are in a cornucopia. Not all of them, but some of them, okay? But just to give you an idea how quickly it is and how we can go about drawing some of these, um, some of these uh, vegetables and some of these fruits, it's not really that difficult to draw. For example, we're going to do some grapes, okay? A grapes. Grapes will be like a semicircles, like little semicircles, right? Some of them will be half, other ones will be three-fourths, and some of the other ones will be whole. So we're going to go as such, okay? So we're going to go right here, going to go like this, going to go like this, going to go like this. This is how all the, the grapes are looking like, okay? And then we're going to go on top of that because this is behind us. Then we'll come up with another bunch of grapes here, the top of the grapes. And we'll make these just almost all completely full, okay, on the top. In fact, we're going to circle this one here. We're going to come up with another one here. And this is where the stem, we're going to put the stem here of the grapes. We're gonna put a grape behind it. We're gonna put another grape here, another grape behind that one, almost one here. We're gonna put almost a whole circle here. We're gonna put another one here, all right? So it's just a bunch of circles next to each other, okay? So that's how you go about drawing some grapes. It's just semi-circles and circles all together. And whenever you'll see the grapes at your grocery store, Take a look at them and see how they're placed and They almost Fall in the same rhythmic pattern. Okay, it's you know uh, mother nature is so cool and how she grows her different um, vegetables and fruits There's some of them are so symmetrical Symmetrical being that you can cut it right in half and both sides are the same so you can see that as the grapes, okay? And this is the, the stem that goes there. And then we can put little uh, little things around the sides where the where the grapes are normally have their little like a little belly button that they have. Alright. So that's how you go about doing that. And that's how you go about drawing a grape, okay? Alright, so that's a little thing of grapes that we have. That's relatively easy to do, okay? Now, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and uh, draw a carrot. Carrots are relatively easy to do too. It's almost like a cylinder that starts, well, this particular one that I'm drawing one is starts at the bottom, comes around, and just remember that the carrots, they always have all sorts of little bumps on the way around, and then it's got its little stem at the air, at the front of it, in the little circle there in front. Voila! And there's your carrot. And then it's got little lines around it too. And just make little lines of such. That'll come around. And that'll look like a carrot. Real quick, easy way to, to draw a carrot, okay? Then the next thing we're going to draw next to it, we're going to go ahead and put... Um, the we're going to go ahead and put the corn all right the corn now the um the native americans uh, like we do in bolivia also which is where i'm from is we the, the corn we dry the corn all right and whenever you dry the corn that's how you go have about um, be making the, some of the popcorn whenever you're drying the corn so this is the way a lot of times they would be dried already in the husk of of the, of the corn so we're going to draw the husk of the corn first here these are just little organic forms, almost like leaves, big leaves on both sides. 
and they come in like this. So this is where the corn is going to be held. Okay, and the corn again is going to be like little semicircles going at the edge because that's how the kernels land. And then you'll have another one here on top. Little corn, and then we'll have the ends of that one that'll go like this. And you know how these kernels go. Okay, and then we'll have another one coming in here. Another one coming in here. So it's just uh, a bunch of the same, the repetition of the same, of the same form, because that's the way the kernels are, okay? Little kernels all the way across, and we'll do the same here, going around. So we get to the end here, then we'll come up with this other half. That's how we're going to go about here, get this done as quickly as we can. We don't want to spend a lot of time because I want to get to the main drawing here. But just to give you guys an idea how you go about drawing each one of them separately, because it's important to draw each vegetable separately. And then we're going to put them all together in the cornucopia here in a second, okay? So you guys get the idea, all right, of how this should be looking. So. It, it doesn't take a lot of skill on how to draw some of these vegetables. All right, the next thing is we're going to draw a pear. All right, a pear is like a body. A lot of times, in fact, um, they say some, some of us human have pear forms. We have a pear where we have the top is a little bit smaller. Then we go in here to the center, which would be our waist. And then we'd go around to see there are hips. And this is what a pear would look like. Okay, and here's a stem of the pear. Voila, pear. Okay, pretty quick. All right, again, not very difficult. And the same thing with an apple. All right, we're going to come here with an apple. And what makes an apple a little bit different than the pear is just that they're just more in a circular versus in, in an elongated way. And then the last thing we're going to draw to show you will be a potato. Okay, a potato, they have all sorts of cool forms. I love potatoes. And remember, the potatoes have a lot of little eyes. And that's what makes them a little different whenever you're making this like an organic form. You put little eyes around, voila, you got a potato. All right, there. So we're going to put all these fruits and vegetables inside the cornucopia, all right? Now, we're going to put all this together. We're going to have this a little bit, little bit more finalized. And let me get me another pencil. Uh, that one, the, the, the tip is wearing out. Here we go. These are all my pencils, by the way. But we're going to be using orange, number two pencil, number two lead. And we're going to start. I have a, uh, I have a picture here that I'm basically going to use as a guide, okay? I'm not going to copy it. I'm just going to use it as a guide. Here okay, we're going to put it with a piece of tape up here to give us an idea of what this one will look like, okay? This is a nice drawing. I didn't do it, but it's a nice drawing of of the cornucopia with all the different elements in it and on these are the things we're going to be adding some of these um, uh, different types of hay that we have going on here we've got some barley we got a pumpkin so we're going to start out with um ouch we're going to start out with uh the cornucopia okay again we're going to start out like we did on this first one all right we're going to start out on this first one let me adjust the camera so that you guys can see this clearly. Uh, I think that's going off to one side. I think it should come a little bit closer. Uh, let's try how, it, how this is going to look. Okay. So we're going to do this. We're doing the cornucopia again. Again, doing a bunch of semi-circles, almost complete circles all the way around. One in front of the other, just like you would be looking at a worm. 
all right and remember this this that this cornucopia came about from the way the goat's horn all right and here we go we're going to go about right here and here we go about right here and this is where we're going to stop okay again we're doing this a uh, real quick quick drawing i hope you guys can see i might have to get you guys a little closer uh, right there i think is good okay and then just like we did the circle up at the front here first so we're going to go ahead and give ourselves a little circle here of where we're going to be drawing almost the little pearls here of how we're going to be going about doing the entrance just like what we did over here we're going to be a little bit more detailed over here to give the cornucopia a little better of look okay so we're going to go with one more over here that's this little section here all right then we're going to start this this is what makes the cornucopia look really cool is the entrance of where the fruit's coming out of again circles on top of circles almost complete almost complete on these all right almost complete i know i'm blocking your view for right now but i have to hold down onto this paper all right all circles guys it's all circles you just have to continually doing it on top of that circle that you have that you made here all right it's not really that difficult you just have to be patient and draw the circles over or the semicircles over and over again until you reach the end of the cornucopia if you reach till the end of uh, where this is going to be ending up at okay as you can see there is some sort of a composition on this cornucopia where this is going to end on top of the going to end on top of the pumpkin here all right so that's the entrance right there all right so you get the idea i would really like to have a little bit more time to shade this but we just don't have the time the cornucopia remember all these things it's going inside so there's also circles inside of it as you can see here all right that's circles that are going inside here and it's going to go in the back and going in the front okay all the way across so the first thing we're going to put over here is going to be a corn they have a corn right there let's put a corn here okay i'm going to just do the outline of this first corn and this is going to be just a little different than how we did it up here to make things go a lot quicker we're going to put little lines here and then we're going to divide them up as such Try to come in a sort of a circle over at the edge to give that dimension of three dimensions okay in fact we're going to sort of darken this up a little bit all right so that is our corn then in front of the corn we're going to go ahead and put a pear all right put a pear right there the stem right there and the corn right there the pear all right and in front of this pear we're going to put an apple wow Take a chunk of this apple, all right, and go around here. You can't really see the top of the apple, but you can see the stem, and that'll give you the, the formation of the apple, all right? Over here, we're gonna put a squash, a big squash, it could be a melon, but it has to be something circular to sort of give the background, to give the background of what we're doing right over here. All right, we're into 25 minutes of, of so far so I'm gonna to try to get as much as I can done 
for the next 15 minutes because that's as far as we're going to go about 40 minutes because I don't want to bore you guys to death and in back here there's going to be other we're going to have a potato just other types of fruit back here all right and then to break the monotony we're going to go and put some grapes here okay remember how we did the grapes in circles so we're going to do some circles 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 over here circles and in front of this guy we're going to put another vegetable and in front of this one we're going to go ahead and put another pear with a stem all right all right and there we have our grapes are back here and we're going to put some hay back here to fill up these areas because that's what normally you put in these cornucopias you go ahead and fill it up with hay to make it nice and full all right so we got a pear an apple another pear and we got a pepper over here one of those big green peppers all right and they also have a little stem so we're going to make this as a pepper and down here we're going to draw some barley okay because barley looks so cool i love to do the barleys they almost look like look like arrows but it's actually a food that we eat i particularly am not fond of barley but i know it's good for you so you should try to eat barley and don't follow my example we see a lot of barley in bolivia with my parents and i think i got burned out that's all i can say why i don't like barley all right and then over here we're gonna hide a little piece of cheese we're gonna bring a little piece of cheese in here little chunk of cheese we're gonna put another piece of barley here and again you know a little barley they're just like a like a little arrow none of these things are difficult to draw they really aren't you just have to take the time to do it and then we're gonna put some hay some more hay here to fill this up over here we're gonna put another pepper this one is gonna be in orange pepper even though you can't see it because we're just drawing it but these peppers are cool looking I love I love peppers all sorts of peppers all right then we're gonna balance this out just like they did over here with some more grapes all right some more grapes over here All right, put some more barley here. They, they make uh, barley, um, they make beer out of barley too. I used to like it. All right, so we got some more barley over here. And then we've got our grapes over here. We're just gonna put some more hay over here, okay? A little hay to fill this up. We're almost done. Right in front is a gorgeous looking pumpkin, okay? Um, how we're gonna do this pumpkin, we're gonna start out by that little stem first. It'll make it easier for, for me to draw it. Let's do the stem first, okay? Because that'll give me a starting point of where these lines should be going to okay because the pumpkin as you can see are in sections and they will go in like this this one will finish off right about right here then this one will come in like this almost all of them will finish right up in the middle Voila. 
you've got your pumpkin. Again, not very difficult to draw, just a repetition of different forms that we have, because that's how all our veggies are, all our, all our fruits are, they're just, just different forms. I know it's a little easier for me since I've been drawing them forever, but you can get the idea. All right, so we're gonna put, a, looks like they have leaves right over here. We're gonna put a couple leaves. These are pretty big leaves, since we wanna make sure that there's flowers on these leaves. All right, little organic forms. And remember the leaves have little veins because that's how they go about feeding themselves is through these veins. And I could give you a whole lecture on photosynthesis and where the, where the leaves are, where they come from, but we don't have time. All right, the next thing is we're going to go ahead and put a, another apple here that looks like that's an apple with a little stem coming out of there. And apples are almost pretty symmetrical. This guy is not looking too much of it like an apple, but I think you guys can get the idea. And then we'll put another apple at a different angle here. And the apples have like a little bit of a tummy right on the side there. And then All right, that's a funny looking apple, but there's an apple nevertheless. All right, on this front, we're gonna have some more leaves. Looks like um, this is a maple leaf. And whenever you guys get a chance, go and take a look at those maple leaves. They are just gorgeous leaves, especially after the ones that are sitting down on the ground right now, all the gold and red ones because of the fall. You should take a look at all the different colors that's going on there. And then down here, we're gonna draw, um, we're gonna go ahead and put this corn. We're gonna do just the outside of the corn first to, to for, so we can get this process done. And we're gonna do a little husk here. All right, and then this other husk that's moved away from the corn already. Just like we did the husk over here. All right, so the husks live with the corn. And again, we're just gonna put little lines here for to hurry up the process instead of repeating each little kernel. But we'll get the idea. All the little kernels are going around like in a little semi-circle type of deal here. This is going to be a little bit more detailed than the one we did up here, but regardless, it still will hopefully will still look like a corn. And these corns, when you look at them also, these different kernels, whenever they're dried up, all the different colors that are happening in the kernels are pretty neat to watch also. So if you guys get a little bit of a chance whenever you're eating your food during Thanksgiving now, Take a look at the different colors that the food are, that all the different vegetables are. It's just amazing all the different colors that exist in Mother Nature. She's the best artist that there is. She shows us everything, everything that goes on. And all I do is just imitate her beauty and what she represents. Mother Nature is amazing, as they say. Okay, and then we're going to put another pepper here. It looks like another pepper is over here. And the pepper usually is, has a nice little stalk. And then we'll have another section here. And then another section here. And then she's laying down here. All right. So that's a pepper, all right? And behind here, we're gonna put another pumpkin, a real quick one, you can hardly see it, but just to get us an idea of what it looks like back here to, to, to finish up the composition. All right, with a little section, a little piece of section there. And there you go, that's a pumpkin. And a little bit more barley here. Let's do a little barley here. 
All right. Little barley here. All right, and then another little barley here. All right. Now we can draw the back part of the landscape. But one thing I did want to put on this in this drawing, we're almost finished. Is going to be the person or the 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 people or the individual or the race that taught us how to do all these things. And that's our indigenous friend, the Native Americans. Someday I want to do a paint a mural of the history of the indigenous people of the United States. I did that already of my Bolivian indigenous people with our own history also. But I would love to do one here of the Native Americans and show all the suffering, plus all the good things that happened. They, they were a fantastic civilization, a society that discovered a lot of things in their days. And they did a lot of great things here in St. Louis. You can go to Cahokia Mounds and look at all their different types of things that they did all the different art that they did, they're just awesome. I'm just um, always completely in awe of the Native Americans, of what they, what they did and who they really are and what kind of people they really are. They are something else. All right, and here we go. We're almost finished with the face here. All right, little eyebrows on the top here. Now let me put a couple of feathers of how they had when they were, they were around. Always having respect for mother nature. Always, always, always having respect for who, who takes care of us and that's mother earth. Without mother earth, we're nothing. Just remember that we need to always respect and take care of our mother. And then we'll put her shoulder right there. All right, so there you go. Pretty well finished up. I wanna go put some, let's put some uh, grapes over here to finish the composition. I didn't think I was gonna finish this in 40 minutes, but I think we're almost there. All right, all right, and there's your there's your scene for th for Thanksgiving food togetherness respect love all those things are so so important of what Thanksgiving means and how you guys should always practice it with your parents with your friends with your brothers and your sisters. You know, forgiveness, the whole nine yards. You know what I'm talking about, okay? So, I hope you guys learned a little bit today. And I hope you guys enjoyed the food. Uh, make sure you are, you all, all of you guys are aware of this little thing that we got going on called COVID. And uh, how we have to take care of ourselves. If we have to have Thanksgiving just with just, just the immediate family, that's cool. We can skip for one year so that we don't affect the rest of us because anything that each one of us does whenever we're not following the rule it affects the rest of us okay it affects the rest of us and thanks thank you for watching and i hope you have a great thanksgiving okay we'll talk to you soon bye bye